So like most kids growing up, I always wanted a dog, but like most parents, mine said no. So over the past couple of years, I've made several robot dog projects. And this time, I want to change a lot of things. In my last video, I made really robust robotic actuators, so I'm hoping those will be enough to power this robot. So in this video, we're going to be focusing on making one of the legs for the robot. This robot is going to be named TOPS, which stands for Traverser of Planar Surfaces. And TOPS, spelled backwards, spells SPOT, which is the name of the Boston Dynamics robot that was a big inspiration for this project. Let's start by taking a look at the anatomy of an actual dog. You can pretty much replicate this range of motion with three joints. An abduction slash adduction joint, a hip joint, and a knee joint. In the actual leg design, each joint will be an actuator. Now, in order to be able to program the robot to do things like take steps, we'll need to be able to place the foot, which is our end effector, at a known point in space. For example, if we wanted to move the foot exactly three inches forward, what would the joint positions be? And how would we calculate them? This is where inverse kinematics comes in. And it's the same process used to map the position of the end of a robotic arm and the joints of an animated character. When we want to move the foot to a certain position, defined as an XYZ coordinate, we'll use inverse kinematic equations to calculate the angular position for each joint to turn to. Deriving these equations involved using lots of trigonometry and defining things like a coordinate axis, an origin, and certain lengths. And the key to deriving these equations was to simplify a seemingly complex leg geometry to a series of lines and triangles. I call these inverse kinematic equations QUICK, which stands for Quadruped Inverse Kinematics. Importing these equations into my CAD program, you can see firsthand exactly how they work. I can enter a foot position in my parameters and have the foot move to that exact position. The next objective is to design the actual leg. So the goal here is to basically scale up this design and use actuators for each of the joints. And since all three of the actuators serve different purposes, each of the designs is going to be a slightly different variation of the base design. After about a week of designing, I came up with this. And with a different actuator design for each joint, I was able to integrate parts of the leg into the actuators themselves, which should make for an easy assembly. Now, let's build the actuators. 2,000 years later. Hold on. In my last video, some of you guys mentioned that using a hammer was not the correct way to press bearings in. So I'm glad to announce that I have completely ditched this hammer for a different hammer. Ha! Gotcha. <laughs> Destruction! Okay, so now that all of the actuators are made, it's time to build the final leg. There's only a couple more parts that need to be printed, and the filament that I'm using for this project are these behemoth Texas size spools, because you know, everything's bigger in Texas. I'm starting off by joining the three actuators together. The knee actuator is going to use a belt pulley system so that it can move the lower leg while remaining on the upper leg. I also printed these idler pulleys to tension the belt. I'm going to be using limit switches for homing. We'll have the lever on each actuator turn until it hits the switch, and from there on out, each actuator should know its absolute position. This is also the same way that a 3D printer homes each of its axes before it starts to print. And after fitting the limit switches and adding a couple more screws, we have our upper leg. One of my biggest design considerations for this project is to save as much weight as possible, which is why I've added a lot of grooves into the parts. Another design consideration was the size of the parts, because when your build plate is under 10 by 10 inches, you tend to get pretty creative. Let's talk power and electronics. 
Each actuator will be made up of a brushless motor and an O-Drive motor controller. The O-Drives will be powered by a 6S Lipo battery and it will each connect to the TNT 4.1 microcontroller via UART serial communication. The three limit switches for the three actuators will each connect to both ground and a TNT digital pin. And the TNT will be powered by 5 volts supplied by the 6S Lipo. I'm doing some quick power up tests to make sure that everything is connected properly and with that done, we can finish the build. The last part of the leg to build is the forearm, which will be made of 26mm diameter carbon fiber tube, since carbon fiber is extremely strong and lightweight. For now, the foot will be 3D printed, but I'll be using some other squishy, high friction material on the actual robot. And with that, we have our finished leg. Now, I'll admit, the wire control, if you'd like to call it that, is not very pretty. But rest assured, this is just a test leg. Next up, it's time to code the leg workout program. I'll start with the humming sequence, which will have each actuator turn until it hits its limit switch and from there move to its normal position. This homing will have to be done on every power up before we can move the leg. Next, let's check out the quick equations. I've created an Arduino library with all of the quick equations and now I can input a coordinate to move the foot to, have the library calculate the joint positions, and then have the actuators move to those positions. Here you can really see the beauty of inverse kinematics. We can make the foot move in a perfectly straight line in pretty much any direction. The foot is essentially a point in 3D space that we're graphing, and changing the coordinates of the point allows us to create motion. Now, I'm programming two different stepping sequences. One is called box step, which just moves the foot in the shape of a rectangle, and the other is called sine step, which moves the foot in the shape of a sinusoidal wave. Sine step is definitely a lot smoother, so it'll probably be the best way to go with a full bot. You can also get some sidestepping action to move the robot sideways. I also had the leg do some push-ups, but this isn't the best testing because the foot slips, which is why my hand is there, and also I'm not using linear rails, so it's fighting against friction as well as gravity. I've also programmed the foot to move in a perfect circle. This won't help with walking or anything, I just think it's kind of cool. The only real issue that I encountered while programming was with defining the angular position of the adduction actuator. With the O-Drive controllers, the direction for an increase in angular position is clockwise. But with the way my inverse kinematic equations are set up, an increase in angular position has to be in the counterclockwise direction. Which means that when the adduction actuator should be rotating upwards, it actually moves downwards, which caused that implosion from the beginning of the video, and also snapped this 12mm thick piece right in half. And with that, we have one fourth of a quadrupedal robot. Now, to finish the bot, we just have to make three more legs, right? Well, it's a bit more complicated than that. I have a list of things that I want to change in the leg design before I can even think about designing tops. Things like switching from UART to CAN bus communication since the TNC only has eight serial lines, figuring out what CAN bus is in the first place, cutting off more weight from the actuator designs, reducing the moment arm of the leg to reduce the applied torque on the adduction actuator, making the limit switches less conspicuous, and the list goes on. But until then, I'll be posting project updates on my Hackaday page, so check that out in the link in the description. This project is also open source, so all the CAD, code, and technical specs can be found on my website, iemusa.com, and the link can also be found in the description. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed watching and you want to see the final robot, make sure to subscribe to the channel. So thanks for watching, and see you later.